I'm Mike Hurley. I meet Clint Gordy in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, that's too relevant to today's conversation. So I want to talk about uh, something that we talk too often about in this industry, and that is onboarding. And as you can already see, I don't think it's an onboarding issue. I think it's really something that uh, you're going to hear me talk more about, and that's a pre-boarding situation. So onboarding is a universal problem with HR. And we hear this from all size customers, international. It doesn't really matter. But it seems to be a unique problem when you pull somebody who's a leader in HR aside and you have the conversation with them. It doesn't take too long to garner. They're not too pleased with their onboarding program. And I think when you look at some of the data and what the problem is, it becomes pretty evident. 25% of employers survey that their new employees are ghosting. Them. They're not even showing up. That's a huge issue. 12% of employees feel strongly that their company is successful in the process of new hire onboarding. <laughs> Reverse that for a minute. The inverse means 88% find their onboarding program inadequate. 39%, if you will, of all employees that quit did so in their first year of employment. That's not good. Now, this is across all verticals, in all industries, so of course, so that's international, but it's certainly pointing to a broader program. And you see over here, 33% of employers lack the structured onboarding process. I would argue that's way, way conservative. And when you really dig into it and you learn more from employers, that number gets way higher pretty quick when you define what structured means. 40% of HR managers, without reading this all the time, they don't have a really good process and they're doing all this manual work. So it's a huge initiative for them. And frankly, let's face it, we're partners with all the big sweet players out there. We like the sweet players. We get along with them well. But we also know, because most of our clients are also using sweet players, they don't have this stuff. It's been a problem for a long time. Now, compound this. This is really interesting to me, and uh, spend a little time on it. We are on the eve of something absolutely unbelievable in the United States. If you can see these slides, which you may not be able to see the numbers, so I'll read about the cloud. Look at the population drop that we're about to experience. So baby boomers, 59 to 76, there's 75 million of them. Gen Xers, those are 41 to 58, there's 66 million. We're dropping by 9 million people available to work in workforce. At the exact same time, this is where it gets really fascinating. People who currently want to participate in the labor force used to be 68%, right now it's 62%. But uh-oh, we're about to see tsunami. Why? The United States is about to see something the world has never seen in the history of mankind, and that is a transfer of wealth of $33 trillion, is the data I found. $33 trillion. What do you think a lot of people do? I wish I was one of them. What do you think uh, somebody's going to do when they inherit a very large uh, inheritance? You take that with already a low participation rate in the labor market, plus a drop in uh, general age group. Our labor force is going to be very dry. It's going to be very, very difficult to hold on to key employees because they're going to have tons and tons of options, all supply and demand, economics 101. So you combine that with the problem, the data I showed in the previous slide, onboarding is a real issue. However, it's not onboarding, it's pre-boarding. Onboarding is over here. Onboarding is, I show up, if I choose to, if I didn't go to the company, I show up on day one. And I'm hoping that I have a good experience on day one on Well, a lot of the sweet players, they start onboarding here. They're filling out all the key pieces of information they need to do on day one. Totally overwhelmed. Disengaged is the employee. Simply said that like Yoda, because they are trying to balance too many things at once and thinking about what they need to do to perform in their job. This is all considered pre-boarding. This is offer letter and all the steps, steps leading up to day one. Now, if you go to certain cultures in certain countries in the world, this timeline, which is two to three weeks in the United States, goes way up. India, as an example, is closer to 60, in some cases, 90 days tradition. So they are pre-boarding over a 60 to 90 day period of time. The s and customers. And they see huge posting generally. Now they're using our technology not to really cut down on that, but they're seeing it because during 60 to 90 days, they're also shopping other offers. So that's what's going on. We have a pre-boarding problem in the United States, yes, but also across the globe. And our international customers support this. 
And the reason we earn those international customers, we're trying to make this lesson commercial award really industry-wide, is for these dynamics that are happening. This data, and as I just said, we're about to see it get much, much worse. So that whole pre-boarding dynamic, if we were to label it as something we have, we view it as the valley of uncertainty. So this is that period of time, generally, where a person is pre-boarding into an organization, they have accepted an offer, congratulations, they're excited, their family's excited. And then they start to think about it and they wonder, did they make a mistake? Maybe they won't even show up. That's a problem. How do they solve for them? Is that employer staying close to them during those two, three, four, six to eight weeks? Or are they not? And if that employer doesn't have very frequent connection with that individual, ideally on their mobile device, most likely the person is already disengaged. That person is joining an employer where they are not excited. And the data and the turnover supports that when you're not excited and you starting a job, you're judging your new employer by how you were treated, not on day one necessarily or alone, but everything that leads up to it, that valley of uncertainty. It's a very, very big deal. So now what? What do we do? We know a lot of scary stuff is coming. There's always something scary coming. We know there's a lot of data there to support. We have a big problem. And it's a pre-boarding problem. That significance of pre-boarding can be solved. So there are certain things that happen in those days. Connections to I-9s, and I'm not gonna read all that. Connections to I-9s, connections to background checks, uh, connections to drug taxes. Maybe the zip code you live in is different than the zip code I live in, and we have different tax forms we need to fill out. All of that is complex, and the employee doesn't care. The employee wants to start a new job, but they have to get through these steps. And right now, at the employer, they're doing it through disparate emails, disparate logins. Maybe it works well, maybe it doesn't. Maybe the employer is doing it in a compliant way. Most of them aren't, and most of them have a lot of liability because of that. We spoke to one employer that makes 150,000 approximately hires a year. 30% of those hires are not in compliance with I-9. Some of the mental penalties for not being in compliance with I-9 is $2,100. It's a big, big deal. So when they start looking at the math, if they so choose to, they've got a big problem. They don't need it in aisle five, and they need to get on it. Now that's at the same time, this is an opportunity for that employee to be treated, again, on their mobile device, in a way that they can start to build a digital relationship with their company, with their colleagues, and start to get to know the culture of the firm they're joining. And if they do that two weeks out, three weeks out, again, in India, 60 to 90 days out, they have a very high rate of showing up. So this pre-boarding process is a delicate process and one that really needs to be managed well. It can be, you create a workflow that connects all these different pieces through integrations, yes. Where it comes in through the applicant traction system into this technology, connects all the pieces together, cleans up all those different pieces that I just walked through, buying on a drug test, background check, tax forms, electronic signatures, puts it all in one. This is where you need to go on day one employee, if that's relevant. This is what you need to wear on day one, again, if that's relevant. This is the team that you will be joining. Here's a message from the leader. All of those things are so important to somebody that's about to join a new company. I know when I joined a new company, I had anxiety about it. We all did. Why wouldn't you? You don't know everybody here. You might know a person or two people. You might know the hiring manager a little, but you still don't really know them. The question marks are all over. This is the first step to clean that up and to create, and it's not too cheesy here, but a comfort zone for that individual before they arrive on that day one. And to now, now they're there, it's day one. How are they treated? Well, they already went through a lot of the pieces. In fact, some of this can be done in advance, ordering quick batch, and if you look them. All of that should be done not on day one, but several days in advance. Makes it sticky at the employer level. If you do that, at the same time, the HR team or the hiring manager is following those individuals through the process flows in the background, almost like a Domino's pizza tracker. You can track who are the people that are going through the steps, or importantly, who are those that are not. You can reach out to those and get ahead of this ongoing ghosting problem that so many employers are taking. If you do that appropriately, ghosting just goes way down. The technology exists to solve the problem. It's a matter of the employer using that's a big part of it. And you know, I'm using the word pre-boarding a lot. Let's go back to the 
or common onboarding term. It's a huge misnomer that onboarding is uh, just considered a day one event or even pre-boarding. It's a lot of different events. Onboarding is yes to day one. Onboarding is your first 90 days. If it's not day one, your first 90 days, that's when you're building a relationship with that employee. There are so many data points. You can like so many data points saying those first 90 days, that employee's deciding, are you a great place to work or do you suck and I want out? And a lot of them go with their feet and they don't give you a good reason, they just don't. And those first 90 days, those are critical. Internal transitions, cross boarding, transfers, when you move from one department to another department, it's a big deal. Mergers and acquisitions. So funny how many employers don't really treat an M&A opportunity as an official onboarding. That should really be a moment to take those individuals and say, they're gonna be fine. We're gonna get you here the right way. So many companies drop the ball on that, they don't have to. That's a part of onboarding. And it's a part of retention, which I'll come to in a minute. And it's a part of offboarding. Offboarding, when somebody unfortunately does leave, their choice or not, how you treat them going out the door is critical. It's a very, very large manufacturer in the United States, one we would all recognize. They finally connected the dots. They realized when an employee leaves, I'm going to try really hard not to say their name. When the employee leaves, they just potentially lost a customer. And that lost customer could go to a different competitor and buy a very expensive product from somebody else. If instead they offboard that individual in a very professional way, and give them the grace that they deserve going out the door. Again, whether it's their choice or not, they have an opportunity to keep that individual as a customer and ideally boomerang them back in, which is also a lot of our onboarding. This is all very important. And when done correctly, the impact is absolutely unbelievable. And we're talking about an increase in retention, compliance adherence, back to that I-9 piece, employee experience, employer ROI. At the same time, as I feel, I hope, I hope it makes sense, Candidate ghosting goes way down. The HR administrator's time goes down. Not to mention the manager's time goes down. They don't have to spend so much on working with that individual. Let the technology do it. The employer's cost and burden goes way down. You take all these factors into account, that's huge. You want to think about ROI, what's the direct or indirect cost savings of having the right type of technology to address this ongoing onboarding, overall onboarding problem? It's all of those key pieces. They add up direct and indirect savings. And you see a folk look at this and you start to work and say, okay, yeah, now I get it. So that's very, very important. But that's not all in this. Wait, there's more. So that's not all. There's a way to really leverage that same data to figure out are those individuals satisfied? You have the opportunity back to pre boarding to say, why are you joining this company? Are you joining because of the leader? Are you joining for the culture? Are you joining because of our class story? Are you joining for the benefits of the pain? That's a baseline data set. And you can check back that individual day seven, 14, 30, 60, 90, up to a year. Do the same type of thing. We just in our technology, yes, but there are others doing this as well. We do have to. But you go through all of this and you can start to compare those data points over time and say, oh, look at that. By certain demographic groups, these individuals aren't too happy working here. And I'm not just talking about gender and ethnicity. Sometimes it's area of the country, area of the world, job level. Those data points are huge. And so understanding that data is an opportunity to retain that individual. And unless that individual click confidential, it's an opportunity to say, wow, look at that. Bob is not happy working here. It's pretty evident based on the trend lines that we're showing in our analytics reports. Let's get ahead of it and try to click that one. That's the entire goal. We call that personally, quick retain. I don't know what the competitors call it. They have this, but this is something that we do in our technology all the time with the right dashboards, understanding the cohorts, understanding it's employee specific, understanding the exact reasons why the data is bring in certain individuals lead an organization on a certain stay. It's a very big opportunity. So really in conclusion here, as I wrap this up, these to me are the three main categories of savings and where you really are by having the right plan. Or those eight points earlier. But they fall under time savings, HR and hiring manager, and the individual, the candidate, right? They fall under enhanced compliance. Absolutely huge. We're talking about things like I-9 compliance. It's important. Very, very big deal. Boring as hell to talk about, but it was super important. Lastly, lost revenue. 
every hour you hold up the hiring manager, the HR person, the new person joining the organization, maybe somebody has to show that person around or help them through some of these steps after they've started in day one, you're costing your firm tons of money. Well, somebody has cost your firm tons and tons of money. That's the problem. So this is the commercially slide. So excuse me for it, but this is what we do at Clipboarding. We've been around for eight years. We deal with a lot of enterprise clients across the United States, a lot of case studies on this across all types of verticals. And we deal with a lot of very large enterprise companies that are wanting to solve this problem. Those customers are very, very big names. We're talking about the United Health Groups, the Western Digitals, the NBC Universals, many others, Kuhn Arms. These are big companies that want help on this problem. We help them through this. And they do so mobile first. It doesn't have to mean that everybody's on their phone to use it, but they can access it in a mobile friendly way on any type of device. But it's very, very important to create a linear path. That individual cannot progress to the next step. So they can take the last step, going back to pre board Doing that all in one environment, where we're giving an API straight from the app we track and system to us. We immediately know who to send a text or email to that new candidate that just accepted that job. How cool is it an hour later? They receive, and bam, I'm exaggerating the app with the the API user. Play the game. It comes right on over, and we release the text to the email, and they receive it and say, oh, look at that. My offer letter just went through, and I'm already getting onboarded, pre-boarded. We take it right through that process all the way until day one. It's very awesome. So thank you for taking the time. Happy to have a conversation. Thank you very much.